Hello, it's me, Kyle. Welcome back to Give Pause Hobby. Um, this is a continuation of the asymmetric exercises, which was a uh, project I started a couple years ago at this point um, as a way to kind of keep my brain occupied as I closed out the school year. And I wanted to make a trumpet exercise, an etude, something about um, technique or skills on the trumpet uh, that would for each exercise map onto each of the factions and root. So I did the uh, original four and the expansion ones. They were all mixed up. They weren't in order like the teaching videos have been. But at the time, uh, the Marauder factions were nary but a twinkle in uh, Cole Worley and Patrick Leader's eyes. Um, they might, I have no idea where they're at in development looking back because I can't remember when I did the last ones. It was so long ago. Um, but in any case, it's been months since I've had these factions in my hands, which was by design. I didn't want to rush into making music for them because I didn't really know the feel, like the gist of these factions, um, at least from my perception. So this morning, I uh, recorded the first one, which is for the Badgers, which I entitled The Future of Our Past. And this is a very different style um, from the song that I submitted to uh, Opie's funeral, um, held the Songs of the Woodland competition that I submitted something for um, I called Our Relics Call. And it's essentially a a, a song a story of a badger child being ex having explained to them by their parent that their other parent is going off to seek out and and recapture relics from their past because it's a duty that their culture needs them to do regardless of how dangerous it might be and so it's a very melancholy uh, song and I wanted something to be very different um, for this version of it but I also you know, the, the technique um, that I wanted to map onto the theme of uh, the faction, I knew from pretty early on, I wanted it to be the concept of the bugle. Um, so all brass instruments, you see all my fingering charts from all of them behind me, all brass instruments stem from the bugle, which is just a length of tubing doesn't have to be metal. It wasn't metal for a long time. Um, and then a mouthpiece to buzz into with a bell on the other side. And uh, you can make sound um, from, from something like that, but you can only make certain pitches. I could not do something like this. I could do that last part where it was all open because on a bugle, you could only play the notes in the harmonic series um, in acoustics, uh, that's what's known as the only notes that can uh, kind of <laughs> vibrate through this length of tubing um, with different intensity of uh, airspeed. So without using my valve, so that was kind of, if I was a bugle, that's all, those are all the notes I could play. And if I put down the next valve, the second valve, It's the same kind of like series, just shifted down a half step for those of you with keeping track at home. And that's that was the extent of those instruments back then, which meant they were not typically referred to as like the musical instruments of the time. They had strings, they had woodwinds, they had uh, some amount of pitch percussion. They were perfectly happy having those be the majority, if not in some places, all of the music of the time. Um, and the bugles that existed were just for heralding the entrance of royalty or telling troops on a battlefield to go forward or retreat or telling you know troops or civilians it's time for bed or it's time to wake up um, which is still something that you hear bugles doing um, from time to time but uh, there was came a time when the trumpet well at the time the bugle um, was was uh, they tried putting some keys on it. So it didn't look like valves, it looked like keys like a saxophone. And one of the, still to this day, the most like pivotal and well-recognized brass concertos began with a very simple melody that for any other instrument, they would have been like, well, why is this even worthy of you practicing and let alone performing in front of people? But for the trumpet, um, when they heard Haydn's concerto, the very first notes were kind of like 
like mind blowing because instead of all that the bugle sort of stuff that they were used to the trumpet playing, the very first notes went and then from there so those first three notes concert E flat, F and G those that would, would have been impossible for a trumpet to play. Now, if they would have got high enough, they could have played those three notes in a row because as you get higher, notes get closer together on the bugle. But at that range, it would have been impossible before. And so people were just like, what is this instrument? And it was filled with issues, the keyed bugle. Um, but eventually they figured out the valves and the rest is history. So the history in today's exercise um, is <clears throat> anything that is played with one fingering pressed down. So there are sections where, like at the very beginning, we have, we have that's all a bugle call, but then after that, we have valve work. Um, so this is me kind of giving a hat tip to the history of the trumpet flipping back and forth between what the only things that would have been possible before and what we are able to do now on the trumpet. Um, and then back to the theme, this is, um, you know, I, I didn't want it to be like something very different to, sh to represent like the badger is present and then this like antiquated sounding thing for their past. I wanted these to be intermeshed. So the melody kind of weaves back and forth between, uh, between you know, lots of fast valve work and um, just you know, lip slurs sort of stuff where I'm just changing the the speed of the air. Hold on, let me get. I have the beginning memorized, but not the whole thing. So, you know, in one one part in particular, uh, towards the end, I'm going back and forth between, which is all just, I'm changing sound by changing my airspeed. And, so I'm pounding through the chromatic scale by going through all the different fingerings. Um, so I'm alternating between these two extremes, playing uh, something only with our, my air and then playing, you know, obviously with air, but also taking full advantage of the valves that I have. Um, and then closing it out, let me move this a little way so it's not quite as loud. Closing it out, I have, you know, this final bugle call with a little flourish that, again, would only be possible with, um, with the valve. So it sort of shows how, how close to the chest um, you know, the badges are playing their history. They're keeping it, uh, you know, gripped pretty tightly that their what they do right now isn't just inspired by their past, but like their present is their past just with a little bit of flourish added to it. Um, and so sorry, leader games, if I'm putting, uh, way more or, or different character than than you intended on the badgers but um this is just kind of how how i interpreted them so here's that that final flourish oh not that so it's a very simple the g um, at the end but it's a uh, it's only possible because of the vowels um so yeah, it's this is the the, the first of the two uh, Marauder uh, exercises, and at the beginning I I uh, notated with unquestioned purpose. Um, so it's that part tracks you know right on you know tit for tat with the um, the relics call or our relics call the song I made that, that in both cases they. They absolutely, there is no option of not heeding this call. It's just in this case, it's a lot more of like, kind of like patriotic sort of, we're off to do this duty, as opposed to like, we need to do this duty. Um, 
And I think that's that's probably more reflective of me being excited to be back in this project than anything else. So with that, um, I'll stop blabbing about the trumpet and the exercise, and I will uh, kick it over to past Kyle, um, who recorded this in the other room. So uh, enjoy, and whenever I, I have the idea for the rats one, um, I have nothing written down on paper yet, so, but this one took form in 30 minutes um, after me thinking about it, having kind of the concept in my head. All of a sudden, one afternoon, I just kind of bleh, and like vomited it out onto paper. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's this wonderfully uh, detailed look. Uh, I'll probably put a picture in here so you can see what my scribbles look like before I make them fancy, which I will show you in a second as I perform. So thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the exercise.